My name is Sarah Stramontini. I'm a peace researcher from Brazil. I'm currently at the Greenhope Seminar Center, which is the home base of the Master Program on Peace Studies at the University of Innsbruck, Austria. This program follows the Transrational Peace Approach, which is described extensively in this book called Interpretations of Peace in History and Culture, written by Professor Dr. Wolfgang Dietrich, Professor Dietrich is the UNESCO Chairholder for Peace Studies at University of Innsbruck. As well, he is the Director of the Master Program on Peace Studies at the same university. My question is related to transrationality. What are the practical consequences of this philosophy? Yes, this is a very important question because um, the reason for doing peace philosophy or peace history is that we can approach these findings in practical conflict transformation and uh, as a result of this transrational philosophical approach we have the so-called elicitive method of conflict transformation uh, in our program there is a focus on specific methods and tools on that in our program and we took this word elicitive from uh, my colleague John Paul Lederach from Kroc Institute at the uh, University of Notre Dame in the US. Uh, he coined this word, this artificial word, meaning that he turns away from this idea that there is something like a final status that we call peace and you go out of a conflictive situation there which makes the conflict worker sort of a plumber or an engineer. Uh, an engineer who knows how to treat uh, human relations like a wheel, a broken wheel in a machine and you just replace or fix this wheel and then afterwards you have peace. So he turned away from that and said the main point in conflict work is that you acknowledge as third party which is what a beast uh, worker always is, that you acknowledge that the energy for transformation is already in the dysfunctional system, that is, it is in the hands and in the hearts and in the minds of the parties. That is, I, as an expert who work with parties in a conflictive situation, do not know the result, where I go, but what I have to do is that I elicit the potential of the parties to find new options uh, for acting, for interacting with each other and turn away from the dysfunctional mode that obviously was there because if not we would not talk about conflicts. Here we see also that this method provides a totally different understanding of conflict. Conflict in this language is not something problematic, it's not bad. It's rather the opposite. We say, well, Great, there are conflicts because this is an, 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 as a demonstration of human interaction, of uh, energy, of life energy in human relations. And uh, most of the time we have conflicts because if it's just conflicts of interests, mm -hmm. as soon as you have two people meeting, you uh, will see that there are conflicting interests, conflicting goals, and um, that's an everyday, a normal situation. And the good news about the humankind here is that most of our conflicts are solved without even realizing that there are conflicts. Because we are trained for that, our brain is made for that, that we see, okay, there is a sort of clash of interests, and now if I do that and that, we get a good result. This is what happens most of the time, and when that happens, usually we do not talk about the issue. We only talk about it if this fails, so if we fail in our attempts to transform conflicts, non-violently, uh, peacefully, mercifully, if you want, if we fail, then this becomes a bigger issue and it becomes a topic of interest for research or for politics, for peace workers. So um, following Lederach with this elicitive approach, we acknowledge and respect that the potential for conflict transformation is in the hands in the arms and minds of the conflicting parties and therefore the conflict worker is nothing but a provider, a facilitator in the very sense of the word, which means he provides a frame for the parties where they can safely explore alternative options of interaction which satisfy them more than what they were doing before. So again also the uh, evaluation 
of the result is in the hands of the parties and not of the expert or the peace worker. This requires a very different understanding of peace work or trend conflict work in general and especially of the personality of the conflict worker. The conflict worker may not understand himself here as like a doctor who fixes or treats a sickness but just as I said before a provider of a frame that allows the parties to explore their possibilities. Uh, for being able to do that you have to be trained because a modern person usually tends to look for solutions like the word conflict resolution says we do not believe in conflict resolution we do not believe that conflicts can be resolved mm -hmm. because whatever you get after resolution is a new situation and necessarily there will be new challenges new conflicts also in the new situation so this is a never-ending process and we do not seek solutions but we seek just transformation that allows the people who are concerned by this conflict uh, to define their new status or their new relation as something more beneficial for all sides than the previous uh, way of relating. And there we have certain principles how we deal with that. What do you need for being able to do elicitive conflict transformation? Uh, and for that we have this principle of resonance, which means that I as a conflict worker uh, need sort of an antenna and at the same time, well, let's say a receiver and a sender uh, of all kinds of human life energy. So that means I have to be able to relate on the rational level, but in the transrational sense, also in all, on all the other layers mm -hmm. of human existence, and the knowledge that this happens anyway. It's just a question of consciousness, whether I know that I am in this moment when I relate to you also a spiritual being or a communal being or a sexual being. This is always there, we cannot ignore that, or well, we can ignore that, but the result will be mm -hmm. that we are not complete in our relation. And the point now is how can we use this interaction in a uh, beneficial, in a, in a healing uh, manner in a conflicting situation. So that means that as a conflict worker you expose yourself to the parties with your complete personality and you have also to perceive and respect the parties as uh, complete beings with all these aspects. This is quite a challenge, it sounds nice, but if you do that in practical work you will realize that it is a quite uh, difficult and, and, and challenging, demanding uh, way of interacting. So the second principle of elicitive conflict transformation is the principle of correspondence, which says, uh, well, in a, in, in a few words, that um, what happens between or among human beings also happens inside of human beings. That is, I can read a conflict into both directions. I can... Uh, draw conclusions from the inner struggles of the parties to their relations, to their interhuman relations, or vice versa, I can read the external uh, dysfunctional aspects of a system and draw conclusions about the internal uh, aspects of one party or, well, several uh, people. So this corresponding principle allows me to uh, address a conflict from different sides. I can start from individual aspects, I can start from communal or societal aspects, depending on the situation and the visibility of the uh, topics of the issues uh, in this conflict. So the third aspect of elicitive conflict transformation is homeostasis, a principle that we took from system uh, theory. And in our context here, in this, as a practical uh, tool, it means that we see in the narrative of a conflict uh, what is emphasized, what is underpinned, what is stressed very much by the parties. And as soon as these four major uh, piece out of terms get out of balance, uh, we will know from which side we can address the conflict. 
That is, again, we have peace out of harmony, peace out of security, peace out of justice, and peace out of truth. What are the parties telling us about the conflict, about the other, about themselves? And are all these aspects regarded? Most of the time, if it is a hot conflict, if it is a real problematic situation, we will find that some of these aspects are not regarded at all and others are overemphasized. Usually in the 21st century, we find in political contexts, we find the topic security uh, as a first priority. And if you talk about harmony, people just start smile, what should this be? I don't believe in harmony, whatever. Because the general narrative, our interpretation, the modern interpretation of the world uh, gives us this priority and this in itself creates a lot of violence, a lot of uh, problems because he who fears the others of course is the first threat for the other and therefore this circle of so-called defense which is in reality a circle of aggression starts. Uh, so what can you do from an elicitive approach? You try to balance the narrative and from the narrative the attitude and the behavior of the parties. So Professor, thank you for the explanation. I would like to know what is the difference between the, pre the elicitive method, method and the prescriptive method on conflict transformation? Could you please tell us? Yes, well, uh, in conflict studies we usually uh, distinguish between three types of approaches. The best known and I would say also out most outdated one is conflict resolution. Uh, which means or starts from the presumption that if there is a conflict and usually conflict is meant here as a violent interaction of people of societies, people, states, whatever, uh, that you start from a violent condition and go into uh, a nonviolent one by doing something. So it is the idea that you can make peace with an intervention of third parties. This can be in very different ways. This can be in diplomatic ways. This can be um, armed uh, peace operations or, uh, well, all kind of economic measurements and things like that. But always with the idea that you can do it. And this is a very linear, vectoral understanding of conflict. Um, and I would say from at least our transrational point of view, this is not really responding to the complexity of human relations mm -hmm. in general. However, uh, the definitions are not that clear uh, in the conversation and disputes of the different schools, so it's not always that somebody who uses the word conflict resolution really means what I just said. It could be also meant as conflict transformation. However, in the UN system, we nowadays talk about uh, these four steps of uh, conflict prevention, uh, then peacekeeping, peace enforcement, and post-conflict peace building. That is the most common use. But all of that always with the idea that there is an ultimate goal that you can reach and afterwards you are done. Now it's quite clear after all that I said with the systemic approach and the holistic approach of transversional peace studies uh, that we do not believe in this method. Uh, we believe only in transformation, which literally means that you go from one not that satisfying or maybe uncomfortable or even violent uh, way of, interact, of communication, of interaction, into something else. You transform it with the uh, means of the parties into something else that satisfies them more that comforts them more, or maybe that also ends with uh, violent interactions. Acknowledging that once you have done that, the next step is the next challenge, and there will be again a demand uh, for uh, new ways of interaction, because that was is what who human life and what human relations are. They do not end. Uh, changing their, their shape and their logics, and therefore this is a never-ending story. And now with, uh, if it comes to conflict transformation, if we agree that we use this term and acknowledge this energetic, this dynamic aspect of, of the humankind, uh, then we still have to distinguish methodologically 
uh, between different forms of interactions and there would be one that has this idea of the doctor again who treats a sickness that is the idea that I can fix something that is not uh, nice, that is not welcome in specific relations or then the elicitive approach that uh, turns away from this idea that I as the third party, as the expert can do it and reduces my interaction just to the uh, or my intervention to the position of a facilitator of a provider and maybe also well, in a way as a, as a proposer uh, as a storyteller if you want uh, that allows the party to, to explore alternative options of their interactions. And then again, we talked already about that before, uh, then uh, different specific subtle skills are required on the side of the conflict worker mm -hmm. because it really is a very different approach. It does not give you the satisfaction of an end result that you have done it, never. It is just maybe that there are moments when you see that you are not necessary anymore and you disappear from the scene. Um, well, satisfying in so far maybe if you have a look at it and you see, well, okay, these people are doing better than before, maybe, but uh, never with this mathematical end result of a societal situation. Regarding what you have just said to us related to the peace workers, what are the qualities that a peace worker in this elicitive approach must have in order to use this tool properly. Could you please tell us? Uh, I would say we have three uh, different aspects that have always been uh, in the mind of an uh, elicitive peace worker. This is awareness of the self, awareness of the surrounding world, and awareness of the own fantasies. So why do we stress awareness so much? Because uh, out coming from a, from a modern background and being fixed on final solutions, we tend to mix up uh, what we really perceive with what we want to see or hear or, or perceive in general. And we do not take into consideration our own role in a conflicting system. Mm -hmm. So in an elicitive sense, a conflict worker is never the external doctor, but necessarily becomes a actor in the dysfunctional system. So peace work here means I become part of the conflict. I'm not neutral. I cannot be neutral. And I cannot be impartial. I can only be all partisan in the sense that I am aware of my function as somebody who wants to balance here a dysfunctional flow of energies and that means that I am uh, integrated into that now. And this is a total different stance, this is a totally different uh, challenge to the, to the uh, presumptive or alleged uh, peace worker. Uh, and the main point here is now if we talk about awareness the awareness of the own fantasy because we as human beings love our fantasies. <laughs> we are all great movie directors and we run through this world uh, disconnected from what the surrounding world really sends us as an input and we are totally in love and, and uh, fascinated by our own movies. And now if I act as an elicitive peace worker according to my movies, I will definitely not respond to what I get from the parties. And we see in evaluations of real peace operations that uh, very often these operations fail because of that, mm -hmm. because of the, the actors, the alleged peace workers are in love, are fascinated by their own movies, want to go for their own goals because they think that they know what has to be done. They disrespect the parties because they do not correspond to their internal movies. And uh, of course by that they are by themselves think dysfunctional elements in an already dysfunctional uh, system. That means they create more harm than benefit for the people who are in, in the field, who are on the spot. 
So therefore, awareness training is crucial for an elicitive peace worker. And in our program, we have a major part of our didactical elements addressing that. So the students are, general, uh, are permanently challenged in a way to be aware of who they are, how they relate to each other, what their daily conflicts are, what the, their concepts are, uh, what their cultural um, biases are, and we do not say that they should forget that or turn away from that because it's very important that you keep your own personality integrated, but that you are aware of that and that you also are aware of the different kind of the other and that you are able to respect that. So that's, the, I would say, the precondition for uh, becoming an elicitive conflict worker. How do you implement that in the academic training in your program? Well, we have different tools for that. Um, on the one hand, we have a specific design in our academic seminars. Uh, then we have a cognitive part of practical field training where we try to give the students an, an impression of what it really means to work in a hot conflict zone. And uh, the most important regarding your question here is the so-called fifth modular period where we do a lot of introspective techniques that combine the psychological with the physical aspect of the peace worker or the future peace worker. Uh, so for making that illustrative, uh, for example, there are workshops on holotropic breathing, on Aikido, on theater of the oppressed, on nonviolent communication, uh, on Buddha dance, on five rhythm dance. That is everything that uh, addresses this uh, psychosomatic interaction of the humankind and helps the student to become aware of him or herself. So thank you, Professor, for the whole explanation. And for further information, please visit the website. Thank you.